Today's video is a very honest opinion about the uh, Celestron Nexstar 4 slash 5 SE mount. I'm going to go into uh, what I like about it and what I dislike about it. And there's a reason there's a tripod uh, from a CG4 beside it. I'll get into that later. But for starters, uh, it's fairly stocky and it's, um, it's solid when it's set up properly. You see a lot of forums where people are talking about equatorial uh, wedge. It does have that, in case you were wondering. It's not very good, but it works. It comes with a bubble level and some uh, additional stuff like this useless cord right here um, that uses an out of date adapter for PC which you have to get an adapter that will fit this plug if you have a modern PC to use the interface um, as you can see it accepts dovetail rails which is standard with telescopes good ones anyway and the uh, controller 40,000 plus object database pretty nice easy to use um, the idea that it just hangs like that kind of sucks um, and it's really a pain especially in the dark to try to hang this thing back up I find myself just unplugging it here and putting it into the auxiliary jack in the front I don't know if you've tried that because you're afraid you mess something up but it actually runs it this way anyway um at the price range i would say it's superior to uh solar lunar and planetary tracking now uh i give it a 10 on that it's it's really hard to beat at the price range it's it's an amazing piece of equipment for that so uh, a little later i'll be trashing it in ways but for now i'm talking about the things i do like um, it's really light overall um, it's not as portable as a lot of people claim you're still gonna have to um, carry it in pieces you're not gonna run out the door with it like this look how big this thing is even when the legs drawn in and everything especially with a scope on it which is something I wouldn't do is carry it with a scope on it but um, interface is really easy there's an on and off switch um, Let's see, I got this plugged in, maybe not. There we go. Let me just press enter to begin. And uh, up and down arrows. Auto two star, two star line, one star line, solar system line, EQ north, south. A lot of different methods. Um, but, uh, Something um, not a lot of people are familiar with is if you click menu before you go into that, scroll up and down. You see all these different settings. The camera, that's where the camera is to uh, set up your exposures for your DSLR. User objects, things you can input yourself. Um, but let's go back to uh, tracking and press enter. And then rate enter. I see there's Sidreal, Solar, Lunar. It's important that you set that right if you have any expectations at all of uh, long exposure photography because uh, a lot of people bypass that and I've seen it in their videos. They absolutely did not read the instruction manual. So check out sync when you locate an object in the sky. Make sure that you sync to that area of the sky for greater accuracy. And um, that's gonna benefit you more than anything else anybody tells you about getting uh, good tracking with this system. But how is it on, uh, how loud it is, is uh, 
relatively quiet. You see I'm on a slew speed for nine because I'm on location now. Pretty quiet. Next question may be why I keep it around and why I like it so much. And to answer that, I'm going to say that it's excellent at planetary, solar, and lunar. I just, just the only answer I have. Uh, it's really good at that, especially if you use a Maxutov like the ones that come with it. Um, it's fantastic for tracking. You figure uh, at around 50 plus frames per second with uh, an average of a thousand frames per AVI. So that's just over a minute and a half. Um, it's very capable of doing that. Now, uh, depending on the focal ratio of your telescope, and I've put everything down to an F5 on this rig, uh, for deep sky objects, you're definitely pushing the limits when you get around 30 seconds and you'll see that in articles online other people who have tested that I have put so much effort into beating that number and I just can't do it so if you're looking to do DSO with this this mount then you might want to reconsider now it's time to get into things I don't like which unfortunately there's more of those than things I do first off let me show you how this is mounted here these knobs lock base the mount head to the uh, tripod. Look how awkward that is. I have like medium sized fingers. That is ridiculously awkward to try to cram your fingers in there to get that. Uh, second thing, well, actually, let me get into this before I forget about it. You see, you have an auxiliary jack and a camera jack. This is for connecting your camera, which you don't have a supplied cable. It comes with, with this guy. But go to Radio Shack, get this, and adapters, and you got it. You got it licked. But there's a menu in there to set up your camera for exposures. Why it beats me because it's not good at DSA. It's crazy. <laughs> But uh, this is an actual uh, auto guider jack on the 6SE and the 8SE. Very important that you keep this in mind. This is not a platform that's going to be used with an auto guiding system connected to it. They don't advertise that because that is a huge downfall. The, next star 6 se and 8 se mount have an auto guide port this has this stupid camera jack which is pretty much useless um, it locks an azimuth but not altitude altitude free turns why is that important if you change scopes if you put heavy gear back here you have a balancing act you have slippage in it I can turn this with my hand while the motor's turning on mine. It's not hard to do. It only uh, locks and engages when it's rotating. It's really trashy. I, I really hate that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I told you I'd tell you why I had the CG4 mount. See the, the legs are a little bit more stocky. They're also solid. Uh, these are seamed. There's a seam that runs up here. Uh, let's see if I can find it for you. I don't know how good my lighting is out here, but the, anyway, that's not too important. But it's just minor things like that that let you know how well something's engineered. But you see, these are plastic, and these are hinges, part of the tripod. Very important part. If you over tighten the spreader bar or get too much weight on one leg, you're likely to crack it right here. There's a seam that runs up there. 
and it's actually happened right right there if you look at the CG4 mount this is metal like it should be it should be metal here but you've got this garbage plastic it beats me why they done that that's just a flawed thing <laughs> Um, look at the, uh, the jack here, it's heavily exposed, so it's not something you want, want to leave in a non-insulated area outside. Um, it's going to get corrosion and that sort of thing very easily. Uh, takes double A batteries. I think it was eight. I don't remember. I only did it once and I ran them down in like two and a half hours. It's ridiculous. You're going to destroy batteries fortunately it does have a, a jack for an ac adapter but guess what that's another expense of course um it's kind of clumsy really if if you consider overall the shape of it and that sort of thing is um toting it around it's, it's nowhere near as portable as they claim uh, weight is down but that's a good and a bad thing. I'm only ever going to give my uh, full honest opinion on any of these products. And I hope this was useful to somebody that was interested in it. And as always, clear skies.